Today, we are making my grandmother's southern stuffing or dressing, whatever you want to call it. It's made with turkey gizzards, sausage, and not to mention it's made from homemade cornbread. It is next level good. Now, before we begin, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. For the cornbread, you want to spray an 8x8 casserole dish with non-stick cooking spray. And for the dressing, spray a 9x13 casserole dish with non-stick cooking spray and melt three sticks of unsalted butter. We're gonna make my cornbread recipe first. If you'd like, you can make this a day before. Either way, this cornbread is gonna be good to go. Let's get cooking. We're gonna mix our dry ingredients first. Two cups of yellow cornmeal into a bowl, a large bowl. Two cups of all-purpose flour. One teaspoon of kosher salt. One teaspoon of baking soda. Give it a mix. Set your dry ingredients to the side. In another bowl, add your wet ingredients. Two cups of full fat buttermilk. three eggs, now add three sticks of your unsalted butter that's cooled down. You want to make sure that it's not hot. If you add hot melted butter to this bowl, it will curdle. Whisk. And you're whisking just to combine. Okay, that looks combined. Now add your wet to your dry. Using your whisk, whisk to combine. And the thing about cornbread, you wanna make sure you do not over mix. If it's a little lumpy, that's okay. Just mix until you see no more streaks of flour and cornmeal. Good. Take your eight by eight casserole dish, pour your wet ingredients into the dish. How simple is that? One, two, three. This is gonna be a popular class, I tell you that. Every holiday I get the same question. How do you make Southern stuffing? Okay, put that to the side, smooth it out. Let's head over to the oven. Let's bake this at 350 for 40 minutes, hit pause and come back when it's finished. It's been 40 minutes. Let's grab our cornbread out of the oven. Mmm, smells buttery and it looks incredible. Ooh, look at that. 
All right, let's let our cornbread rest. Increase your oven temp to 375. Now we're gonna get our veggies and meat prepped. Get one small onion, just chop it, rough chop, because we're gonna put this in a food processor, so you don't need to chop it finely. Two stalks of celery. One green bell pepper. Making sure you don't get any of the seeds. We just want the skin or flesh. Okay. Let's take our veggies and put it in the food processor. We're gonna also put one cup of our turkey gizzards in the processor with the vegetables. You can find turkey gizzards in the supermarket. It's normally in the area where um, like your smoked meats are. If you can't find it like individually wrapped, you can also find it in the cavity of a turkey. Turn it on. All right, you wanna cut it off when your vegetables and meat are minced. Remove your blade and head over to your stove. Let's get our skillet hot. Add some oil to your pan, just enough to coat the bottom of it. I'm using olive oil, but you can also use any type of neutral oil like canola or vegetable. Swirl it around, make sure it's covering the entire bottom of your skillet. Just let it get hot. Now add your vegetables and gizzards to your pan. We have one pound of country sausage. Let's add that to our skillet with the gizzards and vegetables. And if at any point you need to add more oil, if you see it's starting to stick, you can do that. My grandmother and my mom love gizzards. I remember when I first started making food for Thanksgiving and all of the contents that would be inside the, the turkey, I would just, oh, I guess I should just throw this away. And my grandmother, especially my mom, would be like, I know you kidding. The gizzards and everything inside that, you can use it, you can fry it. You can make it in the morning for, uh, for breakfast. I just prefer eating gizzards in my <laughs> stuffing and that's it. It adds great flavor to stuff like cornbread, stuffing, or even rice, dirty rice. Add some gizzards. And we're cooking this just to brown the meat. And that'll take about five to seven minutes. So it's been about two to three minutes. It needs some more time to brown. There's a lot of water in the vegetables, so of course, that has to release out, evaporate, and then your meat will start to brown. It smells so good in here. I don't know about you, but I just know it's just like the smell of like butter and, or some type of oil with onions and green bell pepper. Oh my gosh. You know it's the start of something amazing. And at this point, you can hit it with a little bit of salt. That's gonna help draw out some of that moisture in your veggies and it will help brown our meat faster. Almost there. All right, so our meat has browned. Turn off your heat. Come over here and let's melt two sticks of unsalted butter. We used three sticks of butter in the cornbread, but now we're gonna add two sticks of unsalted butter melted butter to the stuffing. 
or corn or dressing. What do you call it? My family, we call it cornbread stuffing or stuffing, depending if it's stuffed inside the turkey or it could be called dressing. Interchangeable. You can't go wrong with extra butter. All right, the butter has melted. Grab your butter and your meat and let's assemble our stuffing. Set these down and grab your cornbread. I'm using my hands to put the cornbread into the bowl. That's the way grandma does it. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can cut these up into cubes. All right, now let's add our meat and veggie mixture. The butter. Okay. A pinch of Italian seasoning. Two heavy pinches of garlic powder. and a pinch of cracked black pepper. Now let's add a pinch of salt. All right, let's give it a mix. What I like to do before I add the milk and the stock and the eggs is to taste it to make sure we, need, we don't need to add any more spices. Mmm, that's good, that's good. Now if you taste it and you think you need to add some more salt, some more garlic powder, some more Italian seasoning, you can do that. Add two eggs. about a cup of milk. Whisk it up. The egg will bind this dressing together and the milk will help keep it moist. Okay, pour it into your bowl. We're gonna also add about a half a cup of chicken stock. I just like to eyeball that. Okay. Fold it in. So my grandmother's stuffing is really dense. It, once you bake it, you can actually take it out of the oven and cut them up into little squares. So that's how dense this is. So it should look really moist. Last but not least, what I like to do, this is not always what my grandmother does, but this is my little spin on grandma's recipe. I like to add fresh parsley and sage. My grandmother usually uses dried parsley and sage, but I just like the flavor of fresh herbs. Okay. Drop the parsley in there. And now the sage. All right, give it a mix.
Now grab your mixture and let's pour it into our casserole dish. And just smooth it out. Just smooth it on out, just like that. Let's pop it in the oven. We're gonna bake that at 375 for 40 minutes. Hit pause and meet me back here when it's done. It's been 40 minutes. Let's take our dressing out of the oven. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Look at that. All right, grab a knife. Now, you can let this cool, but I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm just gonna cut myself a little piece out of here. Grab a spat to get it out. Mm -hmm. And see, I told you it was gonna be kind of dense. Yep, that's it. My grandma says, that's them, that's them right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's give it a taste. Now, I'm Southern and this is a Southern Thanksgiving recipe class. I'm gonna use a little hot sauce on mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Today we are making southern collard greens with smoked turkey and roasted garlic. Collard greens are a staple in every southern household and I'm keeping that tradition alive by making them a delicious Thanksgiving side. Now before we begin, please preheat your oven to 375 degrees. All right, let's get cooking. All right, now we're going to prepare our garlic for roasting. Get your head of garlic a sheet of aluminum foil, just a little square, cut off the top of your garlic, place your garlic, let's hit it with some olive oil, and a sprinkle of salt. That side down, cover. Let's head over to our oven. Our oven is at 375. We're gonna let it roast for about 45 minutes. Okay. Right, why are we roasting this garlic? Roasting garlic is almost like caramelizing it. You're bringing out the sugar, it's gonna make it a little sweeter. To me, it gives it more of a pungent garlicky flavor. I think it's a great addition to collard greens. All right, hit the pause button, meet me back here in 45 minutes. It's been 45 minutes and our garlic is roasted. I would suggest using a tongs to get it out because it is hot. Let that rest over here and let's head back to our chopping board to chop up some onions. All right, now we're gonna prep our onion for sauteing. This is the way I like to cut my onions, right down the root. Keep the root intact to keep the onion intact while you cut it. Cut off this little end right there. I like to go down the center, then go across like that. and then go across. That's how you dice an onion. Well, that's how I dice my onion. Okay. okay. So what we're gonna do is saute our onion with a smoked turkey leg. This is the start of the flavor. A lot of the flavor in the greens are gonna come from the smoked turkey. This is kind of like a, a Gullah Southern tradition to flavor your collards with turkey. Now this, from my understanding, started like, you know, why did, why did we start seasoning collards with smoked turkey? Well, back in the day, my grandmother would always say, you know, we didn't have fancy seasonings and things of that sort. The only way that we can like evoke flavor um, out of our vegetables and food was through 
meats, cured meats. And that's what we're doing with the smoked turkey. Okay. All right, that is done. Put your onion in a bowl and grab your turkey and let's head over to our stove. Let's get our pot hot. I have a large Dutch oven. If you don't have a Dutch oven, just find a really large pot. I wanna put some olive oil in here and a few tablespoons of butter. So we're melting our butter and oil together. I like using double fat because something about it just makes your, your dish more flavorful. So the butter has melted into the oil. Add your onions. All right, what I like to do is add a pinch of salt using a spoon, just kind of mix it around there. Now, what we're gonna do is let our onions soften. Once the onions have softened, we're gonna add our smoked turkey. After we add our smoked turkey, we're gonna also add some chicken stock. We're gonna cook it down with the onions and the turkey until the turkey kind of gets kind of loose to, to the point where we're gonna be able to later like shred it with the collards. Okay, the onions are starting to soften and it's becoming a little translucent. At this point, I think I should add a little bit more oil. I'm gonna turn down the heat as well. I needed to add more oil because my oil's kind of burnt off with some of the onion. So if you, you start to notice that your onion is sticking to your, your Dutch oven, just add a little bit more oil or butter and it's gonna help loosen that, that onions up from the bottom of your, your pot or your Dutch oven. Okay, now let's add our smoked turkey leg. Now we're gonna add a quart of chicken stock. Okay. Add some cracked black pepper. Let's bring this to a boil and head over to our chopping block to cut up our collards. All right, so your collards should be cleaned and dried. We have about two pounds of collards. What I like to do is fold it up, taking a chef's knife, and just cut out ribbons. The chefy term for that is a chiffonade. This is how I like to cut my collards, just like that. I think you get more use out of your bunch by cutting it that small. My grandma likes to cut her collards pretty thick, like that. So if you like yours pretty thick, then do that. But I preferred a chiffonade. And I also like using the stem. There's a lot of people that don't like using the stem, but I think, I think it adds texture and flavor. So I go all the way down. Okay. So this is what is left after I finish chopping my collards. Grab a big bowl, put them into the bowl. You know what? This is gonna look like a lot of collards, but it's not. Because just like any other green vegetable, when it gets hot, it's gonna cook down and reduce in size. So collard greens are a little bitter in taste. Um, that's why in my family, we like to add a little bit of sugar. I like to add honey. I like to add a natural sweetness to cut some of that, that bitterness that you get from the greens.
So Phil Greens, when I say Phil Greens, I'm talking about the family of collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens. They're big in Southern cooking because they grow plentiful in the South because of the weather. So collards are of course cheap because you, you grew them yourself. And the great thing about collards, depending on where you are, well, not even depending on where you are, I mean, they're plentiful everywhere now. All righty. Let's clean off our chopping board, chopping block. Okay. Our smoked turkey and onions should be boiling right now. Let's take our greens over there. Okay. See, our stock is boiling. Let's turn it down to a simmer. Let's add our collards. Smells good already. Okay, and let me show you a trick. Okay, what I like to do is, because collars do shrink, and this may look like a lot in the pot, what I like to do is go to the bottom and bring it to the top. Go to the bottom and bring some of those, some of the collars that have hit the water, bring it to the top, and that's gonna help shrink your collars. You see what it's doing? It's already reducing in size. Okay. All right, let's grab some water to add to our pot. I'm gonna add two cups of water. Right? Okay, let's just add our water to our pot. We're just gonna let this cook down. You don't need a lot of water for your collards to cook. What is, what, essentially what it's doing is steaming down. Once it steams down, you'll have what is called the pot liquor left in the pot. Now, if you think you need to add more water, you can do that, just keep checking the pot. But for right now, this is great. It's gonna cook down and create this flavorful liquid. What I like to do is come back here and check on the collars after an hour. After an hour, sometimes it's great, it's soft, we can start adding our other ingredients. But if you like your collars, like my grandmother likes her collars, she likes hers cooked all the way down. My grandmother used to cook her collars for hours. But for me, sometimes it's done within an hour or two. So we're gonna put the lid on, hit pause and meet me back here in an hour. All right, so it's been a little over an hour and our greens are done. Well, not done yet. We have to add a few more ingredients. So if you look into your pot, your greens should be simmering and it will have a contrast of colors. It'll be a little darker green, some will be a lighter green. And what you wanna do now is take out your smoked turkey leg. Let that hang out right there, cool down just a little bit. Now we're gonna add some hot sauce. If you don't like spicy, you can just omit this step. I like spicy, so I'm gonna add a few dashes of hot sauce. A little honey. And I'm adding the honey to cut some of the bitterness. I'd say about two teaspoons of honey. And let's hit it with a few pinches of salt. and cracked black pepper. Okay. Let's grab our roasted garlic. Okay. Just gonna squeeze it in, just like that. Mm-hmm. Using your tongs, you can break up some of that roasted garlic inside of your pot. Mmm, you smell that? Mm-hmm, that smells good. Okay. Now we're gonna shred our smoked turkey leg. I like to use a fork. 
and just break the meat off the bone, just like that. It should be tender, so the meat should fall right off. And add the skin too, and the shredded smoked turkey. Place that over there. Add the smoked turkey to the pot. Now we're going to mix in our smoked turkey with our collards. Just mix it in. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a taste. See if we need to add anything else. To me, it smells perfect. Let's see. Blow it off, it is hot. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Leave well enough alone, that is perfect. Okay, turn your heat off. And let's bring this back over to plate and taste. Okay. Oh my goodness, this smells just like my grandmother's house on Thanksgiving Day. I like to use a slotted spoon to get some of the juice out. If you like the juices, add it to your plate. <laughs> you gotta grab some of that smoked turkey in there. Mm -hmm. All right, for me, I like to add a little bit extra hot sauce. I'm a Southern girl, we like our hot sauce. Okay, let's give it a taste. Mm. Mm. It is so tender and you get some of that smoky flavor from the smoked turkey, it is Seasoned to perfection, the salt, the chicken stock, and then the roasted garlic is a nice surprise. That sweet caramelized garlic ties in all of the flavors of this traditional collard greens. Man, I tell you, this is gonna be a hit at your next Thanksgiving celebration. I promise you, we are making my mom's potato salad. Now let me tell you, my mom makes a mean potato salad and she only makes it on holidays. So I know when the holidays roll around, I get to eat my mom's potato salad. And let me tell you, the longer it sits, the better it gets. Before we begin, prepare a large bowl with an ice bath for your eggs. All right, let's get cooking. I've got three pounds of russet potatoes here. We're gonna peel our potatoes. making sure there's no skin left over. Russet potatoes are a sturdy potato and it's just a typical Southern potato. My mom always likes to use russet potatoes uh, for her potato salad, mainly because it's a cheaper option <laughs> and it's just a Southern way of doing it. But I've made potato salad with red potatoes. I've made potato salad with sweet potatoes. So whatever potato you prefer, you can make the same recipe with. All right. Our second potato. If you have smaller potatoes and it's still equal three pounds, that's fine. I just have three larger potatoes. So each of these potatoes weigh about a pound.
Every time I peel potatoes, I always think how I originally learned how to peel potatoes, and that's with a, with a good old paring knife. My grandmother never had a peeler in her house. I learned the old-fashioned way. But needless to say, I'm very happy that I have found a peeler. <laughs> We're going to discard the peel. Now we're gonna cut our potatoes into one inch cubes. Now I don't have a system per se of cutting potatoes. I just slice them in half like this and just go across one, two, three, and then go down the middle. Like that. So you should have cubes about this size about one inch. My mom's potato salad is just, I don't know, something that she puts in there, maybe some magic fairy dust or something. <laughs> it's just something about it. It's just the flavors, the, the mustard, the bayo, the seasoning, the, the pickled relish. Mm -hmm. So it's a little sweet, a little tangy, but super flavorful. And one thing about my mom's potato salad, her potatoes were never really the same size. And she said she does that on purpose. And that's because you get a variation of texture. So some may be a little softer than the other. So it's a little soft and a little crunchy. Or maybe she never did it on purpose and it just worked out and she just kept running with it. <laughs> and the great thing about this recipe is not only is it good for the holidays, but for like summer cookouts, barbecues, All right, that should be your last potato. Let's head over to the sink and add cold water. I'm adding enough cold water to cover the top of the potatoes. Let's get our heat on. I'm gonna put this on high because we want our water to start boiling. Grab some salt, about two heavy pinches of salt. Okay, let that come to a boil. Grab six eggs, put them in your pot. Head over to your sink. Cover with cold water. Eggs are covered. All right, turn your heat on. We're gonna bring this to a boil, so have your heat on high. And we're gonna let it boil for about 12 minutes. Hit pause, and I'll meet you back here when it's done. So let's turn our heat off. Grab some mitts. And let's go to the sink. We're gonna drain our potatoes. Run some cold water on top. Stop the cooking. Let's turn the heat off. Grab your 
ice bath and place your eggs inside the bowl. This is cooling down your eggs and it's gonna make it easier to peel. So those eggs were cooking for about 12 minutes. Grab your boiled eggs. All right, we're gonna let our eggs chill until it's cool enough to handle. The eggs are cooled. We're just gonna peel each egg. The trick to peeling a perfect egg is that you want to make sure that you get that skin off. You see, this skin is super tough, so you wanna make sure you get that off. Once you get that skin off, it just peels right on off. The best eggs to boil and peel are older brown eggs because the older eggs, the membrane comes off much easier. What I like to do is dip the, after I peel the egg, I like to dip it in the water to make sure all of the shell is off. And I've seen people roll an egg like this. They say it makes the skin come off easy. We'll see. I like my old way, but nah, it doesn't make a difference. Nah. Well, hold okay. on. And you also wanna make sure that you don't press too hard or firmly on your egg. And you wanna actually, I like to use this part of my thumb to help get that shell off. So it's just like a, you, you press not too hard and roll. All right, so that was our last egg. Let's clean our workstation. Grab another bowl and let's dice our eggs. This is a rough chop. Let me show you what my mom used to do old school since we're talking about my mom's potato salad she would get a knife she would get she would get her egg and go down horizontal diagonally and come across and just down in the bowl that's that's what my mom did hey you know what that might be a little easier since we're making mom's potato salad let's do it mom's way now i decided to do it my mom's way but please chop the eggs any way you like so grab that bowl Go down the center, cut across, cut across. Mm -hmm. Making mom proud. <laughs> I don't need no cutting board, girl. Just cut the egg up in your hand. <laughs> I can hear it now. I know you guys at home probably have your parents' voices in your head too. You're like, oh gosh, I sound just like my mom. Oh gosh, I sound. I can hear it. Clean your work area, put your eggs down, and let's get ready to chop some veggies. DC the bell pepper, we just need the skin. What I like to do is take my bell pepper and go around, okay? We don't need this part, discard it. I'm gonna just do a rough chop because we're putting all of our veggies in the food processor, so don't worry about dicing it small. Put that to the side. 
Same thing with the onion, just chopping it roughly because it's going into the food processor. Now you can find a very small onion, but if your onion is like medium to large, all you need is half. So I'm not gonna use this half. Two ribs of celery. Again, big chops. I'm gonna put our veggies in a food processor. If you do not have a food processor, don't worry. You can just finely dice these yourself. And we're just gonna let it run until it gets fine. No big chunks left. Okay. And you're probably looking at it like, oh, that's a lot of juice and that looks mushy. That's the best part of the seasoning. That's seasoning in there, so don't worry about that. That's the good stuff. Potatoes have cooled. Remove your blade. Add your veggies directly in the bowl with the potatoes. Move them out of the way. Add your eggs to the bowl. Put this to the side. Grab another bowl. Now we're going to make my house seasoning. It's my all-purpose house seasoning, and I tell you, it goes great on anything. It's going to go really great in this potato salad. A teaspoon of onion powder into a bowl. A teaspoon of sweet paprika. a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of kosher salt, and a teaspoon of black pepper. Grab a fork, give it a mix. Set this to the side, grab another bowl. As a matter, no, don't grab another bowl. Grab the same bowl you had your eggs in. We're gonna conserve our dishes, because we don't want to wash all those dishes at the end. Add about a cup of mayo. We're going to add about a tablespoon of yellow mustard, about a tablespoon of sweet relish, a heavy tablespoon, and a pinch of sugar. Get a fork. Mix it up. Okay. All right, to this bowl, let's add a few pinches of the house seasoning. Okay. Grab your bowl with the potatoes, eggs, and veggies. Add the mayo mixture. Grab a wooden spoon and just give it a mix. You wanna mix from the bottom to the top. And it's okay if the eggs break up in there. That's the point, that uh, the yolk is gonna give this potato salad some texture. All right, so what I like to do, and what my mom likes to do, is taste at this point. You taste and adjust. Okay. I think it could use more seasoning. If you like it just like this, leave it as is. But for me, I'm just gonna add a little bit more of my house seasoning. And I think it also could use a pinch more sugar. Give it a stir. And I like to give it a taste one last time before transferring it into a serving bowl. All right, one more taste. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's great. All right, so grab your serving bowl. Put it in there. Now this is old school potato salad, y'all. This is not the store-bought stuff. Now, 
no, no shade to the store-bought stuff, but you're in good hands with this recipe. All right, I like to dress it up right before serving. And I told you, the longer this sits, the better it's gonna taste. I got some fresh parsley here. So I'm gonna give it a rough chop. Sprinkle it on top. And also what my mom likes to do is take some paprika and just sprinkle it on top, just like that. This looks great to me, but the true judge is my mom. I'm gonna call her on video chat, guys. Okay, so mom, made your potato salad. I'm doing it for I'm doing it for Food Network Kitchen. We got folks cooking at home with me. I, I'm trying to show them your recipe, so I want to know, in your honest opinion, how this looks. Did I come close? Yeah, it came. It looks good, but what does it taste like? <laughs> it tastes good. I think I like it. Okay. Let's see, Ma. Let me. I'm gonna turn the camera back around and I'm gonna give it a taste. It's pretty darn close. I think it's okay, close. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, but you know, I mean, I could never, I could never, I could never do it like you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ma. <laughs> Bye.